from the heartbeat. You're tuned in to Harare's Talk Companion, Capital Talk 100.4 FM. Good evening and welcome to Capital 100.4 FM, leading the conversation. Welcome to Catching Up with ED. We are broadcasting live from our Capitalk studios in Chisipiti, Harare. We are live on our other sister stations, Diamond FM, Yami Yami FM, and Star FM. If you'd like to follow the conversation, you can catch us on our Facebook page at Capitalk, on our Facebook page at Zim Papers Television Network. If you want to follow us on WhatsApp or send us messages, send them on 0717 Triple seven. Now tonight's discussion is going to be a panel, and with me on it, Nyarazo Makombe. And me, Penny Pangeti. This is Catching Up with ED. Your Excellency, good evening and welcome. Good evening, Zimbabwe. As you know, um, Your Excellency, this discussion is listener-led, and a lot of what we'll be discussing today comes from contributions that they've made. You've always said that for Zimbabwe to achieve Vision 2030, radical economic reforms are required. Danny Zembe, he's on Twitter, sent a message saying, when you reflect on your tenure so far, do you think you've made life for the ordinary man on the street better or worse? And if yes, in what ways? Well, the journey is not short. It's a long journey. The lives of our people, which we want to make better, must be achieved after going through several aspects of reforming our economy, reforming the way we do business. And in that process, a lot of suffering will come. But what we achieve is what we are looking forward as a goal. So far, we have identified what we need to do in the many uh, areas of our economy. We have a policy in agriculture, a policy in mining, a policy infrastructure development, in tourism, in manufacturing. In all these subsectors, we have changed the approach to make sure these subsectors of the economy should to save our purpose to achieve the goal where every Zimbabwean will be proud to be a Zimbabwean across the country. A big issue that people are concerned with is around prices. A couple of our listeners sent us messages, Susan Tauzeni, Anugara Kushitungwiza. She says, President, my basic commodities are kukwira zwa nezua. Hamga gonewo ere kugazeta mamwe ma prices. Nikuti vamwe wakuti charge nema US dollars. Hatizi tese tinotambira nema US. Priscilla ariku noton, anoti. Hamuna jamuno kwa nisa yere kui itawo panyayema price. Jinjuruku kuira zwa nezua. So the thrust there is basically around cushioning people to ensure consistency around prices of basic commodities. Kana tichiti su wenduru watiru kufamba raka oma. These are the challenges we have to surmount. We cannot reach where we want to go without resurrecting the economy that had collapsed. Our economy had collapsed. The situation in this country was a result of various issues that attended our country, major of which is sanctions, which collapsed not only our economy, it also collapsed our currency. Saka ama yangu, kujitifusike kwa tinafana kusika kutimangwa na tifari, tinosungi wa kusunga mabandi kana rukusha, sunga rukusha kusimbe, tinde kwa tiku inda uku. Uongu tinabandu pakati pedu, zukuti nasu unoyu, akaburea uke yake zure yaka bata pamusha, ndoku isamu Shopu maki, yobata umu, mangwane fuma yawa ni imwe price. Ika asotengba, ika bata ya fuma yawa, chicha, chaitika, chaita kutawe zire, mutengo, hapana. Vanu vedu vamwe, wasinga uisisi kuti, ngati bata nei, tite chulu chumwe chete choku msumu zira nyika yedu, tisumu zira ufumu wedu, tisumu ze ugaru wedu sewanu. 
wongo noti wa jinji wedu wose wano wisisa asikuna wa jinji wa noti wa ah kazi watu dai toto zuwani la pano tukuwa zawani nukuti unowa na kuti dandi chibu zuwanazi kuti muna ano pinda mchitoro mbaza eto kuto kuzukuseni uwana bodorore cooking oil kalandere ya mazoe zuwani ziringa jita 2 dollars kana 3 dollars e, e, asuka ya masika trapa 5 Ukama ni rapa seven. Chaiti kachi. Hapana. Asipa msoro pazu. Munu hiyo ya hali kutenge sana shopie. Achi kwiza mtengoe. Ano kwizere mariano badara. Vano sevenza. Haa kwizi. Kune ba mwezi. Wanenge wa ruma shopa kadaro. Vantino nzikuwa. Wanenge wati. Ah. Ichi chote ngwane yes. Dora. Ichi chote ngwane randi. Ichi chote ngwane chini. Asi ana kana munu mwache tipa wa shandi wake. Wano badara ne madora kana ne randi kana ne mwe mari ano badekwa ne ratiji saka zose hizo zose hizo e, tinuda kutawura kuwa nwedu wanamu zinia business kutizwa kashata inchasuka ngobe kuti wanu wakadero tiba winyanise mupenyu uwe business wabu wa winyani asicha to subira ndicho kuti for economy kuti ikure we must not prescribe prices kuti warima orange ra kweri dichata 2 dollars tona mutemo mparamendi kuti orange chata 2 dollars kana kuti kapi iri pana apa ichata mari akati aizvati zviti the forces of the market the market forces must determine the price there must be competition we need more and more people in our commerce and industry so that there is competition but to do so again as a result of the past history of 20 years or so E, michina yedu ndea kare it's almost absolute so we need to retool our industry our manufacturing sector so that it will become competitive so that we can also enter the global market for us to, to sell our products and earn uh, revenue for the purposes of uh, uh, uplifting the lives of our people Tiri papo kune va, pa, pane pamambo taura nyaye kuti kanda tichida uti nyike yedu yende remberi. Tinofandera kumbo pinda pane nguwa yekuru wazikana. Pane anonzi TM anyora pa Twitter chiti does austerity apply to even those higher up? If yes, are you also feeling the pinch? So kutanga chataka tanga kuita. Musuwa tango titakuta zatoti ku austerity measures mchirungu. Kana kuti kuoma kwe zunu kuti zunzinake takatanga kudimura masalari e vanhu vari muhurumende ma ministers vose pamwechete ne ne vakuru vacho takadimbirwa masalari zvino ndocho kutanga chakadini chakaitika asi chiri pondo chokuti chauno hodlando chando hodlavo e tozongosiana kuti ini ndofamba nemote hurumende handinga regi mote hurumende kuti ndifana nekuti awa sezvo umwe akwira bazi kana akwira kombi chire gabo ndinde kukombi nebasa aiwa zvinza zvinza ku Ndizona manifamisa moti yangu ya, ya president. Haunga zuta mkuti. Ah, president. Wafamba nene moti yawe ya wakatenge kwa yu president. Yondu famba na yu. Asi chandino hila. Ndizona chitenga. Zandino pfeka. Ndizona tenga maono odini. Maono tenga abo. Zose zungu zite teka fanana. Asi choko guriri ponduru kuti. Tino ziba sawa kuru kuti. Wari puwamu ebangawari pa. Tikati pa level. Shona nga mwuri kangaza. Pa level yu kuti. Aiwa, tinofana kutarira kuti tawadini, tawabatisira kura lama. E, no kuti, hati tarenya ya isema, senya ya yoku yema yema, yoku yoku inda kubasa, na komitas. Ma komita basis aya, takanzi wakuti, aa kuita, angashita tu wandora kuinda, no kuzoka, wandora kuinda, wandora kuzoka. Gare gare, tanzo wata yada tu dora kuinda, tu dora kuzoka. Gare gare, ashingo kuira, ashingo kuira, tikati, aiwa, hati batisire ya ama zedu. Munaanga aji badara sometimes eh, eh, three dollars or yaku tawa three dollars or zokira. Saka yosika six dollars in one day. So we agreed as a leadership to bring new buses. Masho mawea asar kubia on a weekly basis. Kana hati one day to release. So ndo nwea chia release mama. Nwea chia kubia ni masho mawea. Tutangata abu nganiza to release mtaundi. No kuma reserva chia nesama baza. Kwa wanda kuma reserva yiku kwa kutiba. Nwadi yiba baza ilike. Toe sa mtengo uri pasi. Saka ewe kana ushida kukwira bazi, lumte nguri pasi unori wana. 
kana wada akozo kushamisira kuti nema akushamisa kubwa kuzwa tinga kura mbizi inyi kakasumbunuka wana shamisira wana mfumizwa asiba nengwa hida wakufamba nema baza kana 50 cents wanda kubasa 50 cents wadini wadzoke na kumba chochi piri e, kune chinkwa kune nyaye chinkwa kune nyaye e, e, bufu e, e, cooking oil zunzwa kadero zuri basic mba mamunu zanga shikwira taka mbo garapazi neva neta ma business eru ziroro tika ati aywa musaita ishi waka mbo terera waka zwerera pasi azu wako kukwira zwakare saka chata kuita zunezi e, kuchurongwa chatina cho ndicho kuti ma basic issues ari basic kumunu mwana ume anunda murira rami zizinji tagazira urongwa wakuti tine GMB edu GMB ina ma e, ma, 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 ma points throughout the country ndio madisha za distribution yedu yu mumumu yukuti mtengo yana yana cooking oil e, yana flour yana yana e, wufu tuwe subsidize dofu nga makanzi kwa kunyema nga itara kumushaba nga dawa singaziba wu tine inunzi e, e, stp yedu e, stabilization program yedu tsp tsp, mm. TSP yedu e, transitional stabilization program yedu ya ya ita consolidation of fiscal kana kuti ya gadzirisa kuti zvanga zvika kare kuti ministry pamwe dzumwe neumwe inoshandisa mari kupfuvura yakarongerwa kuti ipiwe zvozvo zvozvo vane kuti havane deficit e, mu fiscal smedu but ne fiscal consolidation yedu yakaitwa implement ne hurumendi yedu manje tatanga kuwa na surplus nanga ndiri mumende makurose aya hapana pata kamboita surplus Asi kuzo tatanga kuita surplus ili kukura. Now, ndio mare ya surplus ya, it is in millions. Kati chitaura in terms of US dollars, we get surplus perhaps in a month in, 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 above 150 million or so. But the RTG, ini kuru ma 400, 500 million. Yati no wana surplus above expenditure on a monthly basis. Saka, iyo ndia tuwa shani samanji eh, to what we call in English safety nets for those who are disadvantaged at the lower level. Ndiyo tuwa shani sa kutia kushin kukuku kuti vanhu vanyorevere because those zvinongo tanga as we, as, we, as we go on people will appreciate what we are doing as a result of the programs and the re, uh, reforms we are doing we can never 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 progress never have a better life without reforming our economy without reforming the way we are doing business without adapting to modern uh, 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 practices worldwide that we must do uh, whatever painful but we must achieve that, and we must continue to do it. Mm. A big issue that concerns people, uh, Mr. President, is the issue of fuel. Uh, it has gone up three times in the last six months, with the latest increase this week. Um, what would you say is being done to ensure price stability as well as consistent supply? In terms of figures of that, you, you can see it is going up. It's, it's going up. But in terms of um, the U.S. dollar, which many people think about, our fuel is the cheapest. Currently, if you if you if you if you, you look at the price of uh, fuel, it, that is uh, if the if the bank market rate what do you call it, the black market interbank rate. rate. No, there's the parallel market one. There's what they call the para, uh, the parallel parallel mm -hmm. market. market, and then the, the interbank market. Mm -hmm. Now. The other one is almost at eight, right, to the dollar. Yeah. Which means that in dollar terms, our a liter will cost you uh, around 60 cents. At interbank, interbank uh, um, rate of the dollar, it will to cost you about 90 cents a liter. But where in the region do you get a liter in, at 90 cents or 60 cents per liter? Nowhere. Now it's just because people have to adjust from the mentality of one dollar to the mindset where the one dollar transits to five uh, RTG or six RTG. So it is still that's how it works. Yet, if I can tell you, in South Africa, the rand which many people cry for is fourteen rands to one US dollar. The pool, I'm also sure what it is, but I think it is also uh, around nine or ten. I don't know what it is. 
the culture is the same. In this region, in Sadiq, the RTG, our RTG current currency, is the strongest currency in the region. And it makes our exports expensive. So we have a too strong currency, but some people think it is too weak because it's going to five. No, it is actually the strongest currency in the region we have, if you compare it with uh, the U.S. dollar. So it is, however, necessary that uh, we walk that journey. And our mindset is going to adjust as we move on. But as we move on, it is necessary that we carry everybody. And to carry everybody, we must continue to explain to our people as to what all this means. That if we don't do this, what would happen? I don't think there is any single Zimbabwean in this country who would want to continue to have a collapsed currency, who would continue to want to have a collapsed economy. But to rise from those ashes of, collab of uh, a collapsed economy, certain things must be sacrificed for us again to be on our feet. Uh, Your Excellency, the issue of currency which you have just been talking about uh, has also been a challenge in the country. Uh, and you talked about it last week uh, to say that we are going to be having a new currency in the country. Did you mean a completely new currency or the, uh, it's still the RTGS dollar? What every country must have is a new currency. The first thing you must understand is that, yes, we created a basket of currencies. The dollar, the rand, the pula, the pound the euro and so on and so on that's that's a basket of currencies mm -hmm. but each single currency belongs to a country and each country names its currency you understand right. so zimbabwe must reach a stage where it has its own currency which is called zimbabwe currency when you, the u.s dollar or the rtg were introduced when they were not introduced is and government announced that we are introducing a new currency for Zimbabwe. These were measures to deal with the economic situation at the time. We have to move on step one, step two, which I cannot say now, because those are things will be announced when at the appropriate time. We have step one, step two, up to step six. When we reach step six, then we announce what we want for this country, which is the currency for this country. Whether it will be the same RTG or it will be, what is that thing called? Um, bonds. bonds. It, it is at that time that you know <coughs> what we are going to achieve. I would not announce now. No, it must be announced at the appropriate time when uh, implementation is ready. At that stage, all the fundamentals which are necessary will be in place so that uh, no one will be playing around with uh, that currency because then it will be only one currency which will be used in the country. If you have your own uh, dollars in your socks or dollars in your pillow, you will not be able to go and buy bread, you will not be able to go and buy your tie, you will not be able to come and buy this mug with your US dollar because we will have only designated that currency as the legal tender for this country. And any other current, currency, you bring it here, you go to the bank or to the, what do you call this, bill of the change and uh, change it into Zimbabwe currency, which will then be used for transactions in the country. So, we will be to par with the rest of proud countries or members of the international community. A question is coming through our WhatsApp platform and uh, he asks, can we really expect the new currency to work when we don't have production of exports? Now, what are the fundamentals which must be there? That is one of the things. It is um, it's important that this question is being asked. We cannot just introduce currency when the, uh, the, uh, we have not yet created an economic environment where it can be sustained. Yeah. And to do so, production, production, production must be there. Corruption must be eliminated. The mindset of our people must believe in themselves as a people. So when all those things are in place, that's when we do it. That's when we introduce the currency. So there will be no need of... Uh, of other people say, oh, well, look, I, I, I think I, I'm better with a rand. I think I'm better with a puller. No. As long as you are in Zimbabwe, you'll be better with your own Zimbabwe uh, uh, currency in the, in, in the country, not 
of other countries. Another question that is coming through, Your Excellency, is to say, in the meantime, since the U.S. dollar is uh, is been a challenge, why don't we join the Rand Monetary Fund? I should ex educate you and one of us. Uh, just let me give them a bit of education. Okay. In in uh, twenty two 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 zero zero eight. Eh? 2008. 2008. 2008, yes. Mm -hmm. In December, the former administration, which I was in myself, created a committee of five people, and I was one of the five, to say our currency had collapsed in 2008. So in December, we sat down. Because if you go and buy a loaf of bread, you needed two billion Zimbabwe dollars. So everybody was a billionaire. I think some had become zillionaires at that time. So we decided, no, we must do something about it. And then we said, let us approach South Africa so that we adopt the RAND as our domestic currency in Zimbabwe. But when we approached the Reserve Bank of South Africa, they gave us a checklist for us to comply with certain conditions for us to use their dollar. It would mean that what is our GDP? How big is our economy? So we would then need to agree with them to print or to give us that quantity of money commensurate with our, with our own uh, GDP and of our own economy in, in Zimbabwe. But those, some of those conditions we were led to, to achieve that were not acceptable. The same with other countries uh, when we approached them. But we then decided, uh, first to our lawyers, we decided that there was no need in terms of the law to actually uh, have those agreements. All what is necessary is us in Zimbabwe create a legal framework to make those currencies, a particular currency which we put in a basket, legal tender in Zimbabwe. So th there were no conditions. So the dollar and the um, rand is legal tender in Zimbabwe. The US dollar is legal tender. The pound is legal tender. The, the pula is legal tender. Uh, the e what is it called the euro the, the euro, euro is yeah. legal and so on, and so on. the legal tender they can operate so up to now you can't if you want to have uh, to to you to, to use the rand every day you can go to messina with your us dollars and go and buy as many rand, uh, rand uh, runs you want and use your rand as much as you like no one will stop you if you want to pay your workers in runs go and collect your runs and pay them in rand the law is there so there's no need at all to talk about it. Let us do this, let us do that. You see? But if you want to designate South African rand as a Zimbabwe rand, there are conditions that must be followed at law. And I think on that point, uh, we can take a short break. When we return, we'll be going through more of your questions and contributions. Remember that this discussion is listener-led. Keep sending those contributions through on 0717 as well as on our social media platforms. That's at Capital KFM. This is Capital 100.4 FM leading the conversation. The Grain Millers Association of Zimbabwe will be conducting a prize monitoring program nationwide on maize meal, rice, salt, sugar beans and flour related products in all the wholesale and retail shops throughout the country. This self-regulation initiative by the industry is meant to eradicate unwarranted price increases.
so far and for all of your contributions on 0717-777-777 as well as on our social media platforms. Just to remind you, this discussion is live on Capital 100.4 FM, but we are also live on Diamond FM, Star FM and Nyami Nyami FM. You can also catch this discussion live on Facebook, that's the Zim Papers TV network, as well as at Capital FM. Your Excellency, moving on, um, there's the issue of the National Dialogue and on May 17 this year, while launching the politi uh, Political Actors Dialogue, uh, Paulat, you said it would leave a legacy on the country's political scene and help turn around the country's economy. And I understand that earlier today you had uh, such a meeting. Can you evaluate um, uh, the performance so far? Well, you, you need to appreciate the philosophy behind the dialogue. Mm -hmm. We have been a nation polarized in the political sphere or space. Uh, when I uh, became president in November 2017, I said I plead to the people of Zimbabwe to be united, that I will be listening president, that I will want every single Zimbabwean to come forward and uh, contribute one's ideas so that together we move forward and uh, grow, modernize our country. No one should be left behind. That was first. Second point, that we are now going for general elections. In the past, Zimbabwe is known for violent elections. I pleaded with all political leaders and political parties then and uh, said, let us, for this round, this time around, have peaceful campaign. And I'm happy all political parties during that period campaigned peacefully until we had our voting on the 30th of yeah. July, July last year. Yeah. Then, of course, there was violence two days after elections. Yeah. And uh, then, immediately, then said... Although ZANPF has won, I would want to give uh, respect to the party which is the biggest majority in parliament and they move away from the general Commonwealth parliamentary democratic practice and give certain uh, uh, dignity to whoever has the biggest uh, number of uh, members in parliament in the opposition. That was spanned. Then I said, okay, let us create a platform where all of us put the elections behind us. But let us come together, the winner and the loser. And now not talk about the elections. If we talk about the elections, we talk about the reforms that may be necessary for future elections. But let us talk about the journey from one election to another in terms of growing and modernizing and making the lives of our people better. And as it were, they, we had uh, 55 political parties that participated in elections, and the 23 participated um, for the office of the president. So out of the 23, 18 political parties came forward with the uh, uh, ZANPF coming in as the 19th. Those are the ones who signed. But it initially, there is 23, I mean, 22 responded, mm -hmm. but only 19 actually then signed. Uh, to come in and this is what we are doing on the 17th of May uh, last last month we made a launch of that platform we have four committees of that uh, dialogue we dis today we will spend three or four hours discussing issues of uh, how to deal with the challenges facing this country across the body mm -hmm. it is not ZANPF policy or that party's policy it is what the policies are good for Zimbabwe, not what the policies are good for this political party. No, it's what the policies are good for Zimbabwe. And the majority of the 23 political parties are on board and we are moving on. Two or so had pulled out, but during last week, one of the parties which pulled out has since approached me to say, no, no, we want to come back. We see value in the uh, uh, platform, the dialogue platform. So we are moving forward. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that like today we addressed, we discussed the issues of uh, price hikes, what we must do about it. 
the issues of corruption, what we must do it, what we must do about it. Others even uh, enjoyed another one which, who said, Mr. President, you are too democratic. Can you limit your democracy? Be firing some of the ministers. Well, although I enjoyed I don't think the ministers enjoyed that one. <laughs> but, <laughs> as it, to to that. <laughs> <laughs> but as it were, yeah. it is important because it shows free speech. Yeah. People exercising their, uh, their, 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 their views. Mm -hmm. And one, one colleague, uh, one leader of a political party said, ah, uh, I think it is necessary that uh, we change the age of uh, uh, presidents. Mm -hmm. We must make sure presidents uh, must go beyond 80. Mm -hmm. I said, no, I, do, I disagree with you. Mm -hmm. uh, that one, I disagree. Mm -hmm. uh, af then I said to him, after me, I would wish that this country finds a president who is young. Mm -hmm. We mustn't repeat having people of my age. I think we need younger people to lead this country. But what I'm saying this is, you can see the freedom, mm -hmm. you know, of people expressing themselves freely. Mm -hmm. This is what we want. Mm -hmm. And well, persuading me to be uh, uh, autocratic and to be a dictator, no, I did not agree. Mm -hmm. uh, persons should be dealt with on merit. Uh, 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 you, you must be just and fair in dealing with people. If you, you don't punish a person because he's too tall or he's too fat, no. Mm -hmm. It must be on the basis of one breaching, uh, uh, breaching laws, regulations, and or ethics of work. Mm -hmm. Then you, you can, you can, we can act. Okay. Um, granted, um, Your Excellency, the answer. Um, a listener uh, at Haru Zivi Sheje, he agrees that you know our, our nation is affected by uh, polarization. But his question is, how will we achieve Vision 2030 if we can't come together as political parties? And his next question is, what is, uh, he, he thinks our problem is more political. So what is stopping you, President, to have talks with Nelson Chamisa? He actually puts that out. Look, I would not get, you know, a tractor or a bulldozer to go and pull him out of his house to talks. Mm -hmm. I have published that. Let all political parties in Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. let us come together. Is he not a leader of a political party in Zimbabwe? I think he is. Mm -hmm. Why doesn't he come to the table where everybody is? Why should he feel proud that all the other 19 political parties are not important, only his? Mm -hmm. That I don't, in my view, is that every single person, whether leader of a political party or an individual, is important. Mm -hmm. A bishop of a church to me is important. Mm -hmm. A chairman of burial society is important to me. So all those who would want to come and proffer uh, their, uh, their, their views, their advice uh, on any issue, mm -hmm. the table is open. Mm -hmm. Let us meet. We are, as we go forward, we shall have a platform for the uh, um, religious groups. We shall have a platform for the youths. We shall have a platform for the women. Mm -hmm. And they have to proffer their views. On a common platform for everybody, okay. there should be no sacred cow who think they or she or he are s not the same as others. We are all the same. We are all Zimbabweans. Let us come and discuss together. Granted, Your Excellency. Thank you. Your Excellency, let's uh, move to the agricultural sector. Uh, how far have we gone with the land audit? And can you kindly share some of the findings so far? Well, the land audit is on. The final report is not out. What I have so far been briefed, you see, you young person, you want me to reveal what is not ready for the nation. Now that you're asking me, you're cornering me, but I'll answer you. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, why you are here. <laughs> I'll answer you. The interim report I have is that uh, I think about eight provinces have been done. Uh, they, are, uh, they are left some two or so uh, 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 provinces that have not been completed. But the majority of uh, uh, inconsistencies relate to multiple ownership of farms. Uh, we have some, some, some f uh, farm owners, especially people of uh, higher rank in society, having more than one farm, some as many as nine. I know of um, a particular lady, uh, 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 stop it, uh, who has over 16 
uh, farms. And uh, the law says one family, one farm. So once the audit is over, we should be able to uh, implement that, uh, that, uh, uh, that policy. We have people who have a farm and register a farm in a child who is about two years old and give him a farm of 800 hectares. But you're going to trace who this person is. It's a child who is about two years old. So all those things are being unearthed uh, through this uh, audit which is going on. Uh, so when the audit is out, we'll make it public so that everybody knows. And in my view, I should also be able to make it public as to who, who was doing what. Because this land does not belong to one person. It belongs to us all. So we must know who are misusing the privilege of the offices. We, that must be published. Right. Uh, Your Excellency, our, our, our farmers are struggling to get... Uh, uh, loans and financing for, for, for their farms. And uh, banks uh, are seemingly rejecting the 99-year leases. How else can we make our land bankable so that our farmers can be able to fund their operations? The, it's historical. The mindset of the banks has not yet changed from colonial perspectives. They are still buried in the former uh, tenure system, freehold. They cannot move away from freehold title to where a person is given in the 99 years. Very few people who live beyond 99 years. Very few. Right? So a 99 year lease to me is sufficient title to give uh, uh, the owner of th such title to access finance. There were issues which the banks raised in relation to <coughs> the structure as well as the format of the 1990s, which we changed to conform with what they wanted, and we've done that. So as far as the legal aspect is concerned about 1990s, it is safe for banks to use, to, 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 to provide security, to provide uh, loans on the basis of the security of a 99-year lease. Secondly, not all land is, uh, requires 99-year lease. Only agricultural land, which has become state land, that is the land which requires a 99-year lease. Urban land, you still have title to urban land. Freehold. There's still freehold. British concept of freehold. It is still applicable to urban land. Then, of course, of communal land. So it is only in relation to agricultural land where we need um, a 99 year lease. And in my view, it is adequate because we have interrogated the fear of the financial service sector as to why is it not acceptable. And they made their, their contribution and we have taken those on board. So I don't see any reason anymore. Thank you, Your Excellency. Uh, this uh, uh, discussion is uh, listener-driven. Crispin Machinga Uta says, I'm deeply concerned about the treatment I got from the Minister of Agriculture. I have a proposal which will help this country to achieve the vision 2030 through the agricultural sector. So, Mr. President, how can you help me? My, I would like to say to Machinga Uta, Zimbabwe is not a population of angels. And I don't know of any country where the whole population is of angels. I think angels are in heaven. So it is possible that he was mistreated or mishandled by somebody, by some officer in, um, in the, the Minister of Agriculture. I don't deny that. It is quite possible. But if he, he can appeal to higher authority, he will be listened to. But as long as what he needs is something that can be accommodated, it is possible that what he needs is not, is, is not possible to accommodate it mm. under the current uh, environment of our land reform. So it is important that we know precisely what he wants so that we can tell him what window would assist that want. 
I think that's a good place for us to take another break. Uh, when we return, we'll be continuing with your messages on the different platforms. We encourage you to continue sending them through 0717 at Capital FM on all of our social media platforms. This is a platform for you to engage with the president. This is a Catching Up with ED on Capital 100.4 FM, leading the conversation. as well as on all of our social media platforms. Please continue to do so. We welcome our viewers and listeners in the diaspora. We know that many of your contributions are coming through, and we certainly hope uh, over the course of the discussion we will be getting um, to them. Mr. President, let's talk about the team that you have around you, helping you to do the work that you must. How do you rate the performance of your ministers, and do you still think they all deserve to be in the positions that they're in? That question uh, is, is really personal to me. So that uh, my answer, you want to know whether I'm subjective or objective, because it's something coming from myself as I see things. One, as a president, after elections, we have to create a cabinet. And you must create that cabinet from members of your party who have won elections who are in parliament. That's the first thing. That's why you must get your people from, except five. You can get five from outside parliament. Now, the second point is, you mu the, the constitution bids me as president to make sure I get ministers from every province. And I have 20 ministers who head departments. And I must get two, 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 because there are 10 provinces to make uh, the 20, the, 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 the heads of ministries. 
So again, and yet you will find that each province and most of the provinces they have a highly qualified persons. But I must only get it to. The third thing, I must also be conscious about uh, gender. If I must get it to, but I know this province is three top brands. But I can't take them because I need gender balance. One must be a man, one must be a woman, possibly. If I, if I can uh, have uh, women of cabinet quality, I have to do that. Third, then with the five, um, the five positions given to me by uh, the, the, the constitution, I have to see the skills that I have not got from those in parliament to come and blend with those I have got from parliament. That's how I do it. But this is the initial selection you do without knowing in reality whether because you can have a person with a PhD and they say, can you make chips? You won't be able to know how to make chips. So I have selected these people convincing myself I am fitting them where they would do well. But as you go on, you can discover that the person is not as much as you expected. It is only in the process of uh, work that you discover one is good and one is not good. One is average. Then in the future, you change. But if you wish, you may also change uh, uh, during the course of the five-year term. You can change. I, I have the power to do so. So if the question is, am I happy with my team? If I say I'm not happy, they won't have sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they shouldn't. <laughs> I am happy with my team, but I need a lot of improvement from some of them. Right. And, and I guess on that point, would you be open to dismissing um, those who are not performing in the way that you expect? Absolutely. I have that power to dismiss and, and appoint others. That I have, I have power to do so. And I would exercise that. Let's talk a little bit about uh, deputy ministers. This is an issue that has been raised uh, on several platforms around the fact that we already have what's considered um, quite hefty um, a cabinet. We have representatives in uh, different spheres. Deputy ministers, are they necessary? Indeed, they are. In the past, we had, um, I think, 38. I think we had, uh, I think there were 38 ministers, I think. I can't remember the number. We've reduced that to uh, 20 uh, full ministers. They're not 20. Uh, but certain ministers are so huge, it is necessary to have deputies like the Minister of Lands, Agriculture, Water, Climate, and uh, Rural Settlement. It's so huge that even if I, I could put four deputies, but I only put two. So it is necessary in some aspects. So that you see supervision of these vast uh, ministries is, uh, is, 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 is better maintained because the minister can delegate uh, 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 in a cluster form and say, you are a deputy minister, I want you to look after this cluster, you look after this cluster, I as minister will look after this cluster. But at the end of the day, they all come together. So it is necessary to have deputies, in my view, to, to have deputies. And, uh, but still, I have very few deputies. Uh, I think we should have more. I, I don't know why people would fear that it should, it should be deputies. I guess the issue is around perhaps the fact that when the minister is not available, we often don't see a deputy minister acting in the capacity of the minister, uh, that perhaps their role may be redundant because there are other people who are covering for the minister when the minister is away. That's a wrong assumption to the extent that um, when the minister is the main minister is away, the deputy ministers run the ministry. But in relation to sitting in cabinet, a person must be a cabinet minister to sit in cabinet. A deputy minister is not a cabinet minister. So it's only for purpose of sitting in the cabinet that if a minister is away, you have to appoint another minister to act for that ministry or that minister who is away, who will be briefed by the 
deputy ministers to come and represent that minister in cabinet because the constitution provides for cabinet ministers to sit in cabinet. That's the difference. Still on government officials, Your Excellency, we continue to see the same faces being appoint appointed. Don't we have other qualified Zimbabweans to, uh, to take up those positions? In parliament? Where? In, in, cab in, o in, in official, government, government officials, officials. Yeah, oh, even yes, in, oh, yeah. in parastate officials. Yeah. You don't chase a person because you've seen him for two years. Then you say because you've been here for five years uh, in working for government, you must go away. There are regulations that are there. You join after your university, perhaps at 21, you join a university, and they join a ministry. And the ministry, say, minister says in civil service, you must, you must retire at the age of 55 or at the age of 60. There are provisions of that nature. But before you reach 65 or 50, and you are doing work, why should you be chased away? So you'll be seeing him and seeing him until you, see you, you get tired of seeing him or seeing him. Because that person has not reached the retirement age, or he, he, the person has reached retirement age, but because of special expertise acquired, you may still want to uh, keep the person. And there's a provision which says, in that instance, the minister may determine to renew that person's contract on a yearly basis until that person goes away. So that, that's what happens. But obviously, that does not guarantee a person to remain in, uh, in government. If you don't do well, you get checked out. If you don't perform, you get checked out. If you commit a crime, you get checked out. It's like any other private company. I think CEOs uh, keep uh, their personnel who do good for the company. So, so government must do the same. On Twitter, uh, Tim asks, why does he see, seem to reward ministers who seem to have failed in their past roles? That's, uh, that's Tim there. I don't know who has failed in the past role. He has been rewarded for failure. What happens in some instances is when a particular minister has particular attributes which are necessary for advancing a particular direction, you, you can always appoint that minister because you know attributes in that minister or that person to continue doing certain, certain, certain work which you think that person has capacity or is endowed with the experience or institutional memory to do certain things. That will happen. It's not unlawful. It's lawful. It's provided for. But as long as they are... If we are president, you always want to make sure that as you go along, you also infuse new blood into the system so that as we retire, we leave also experienced young people. Like in my cabinet, I have young people uh, uh, in my cabinet, uh, uh, young young chefs who are members of the youth league, they are in my cabinet, right? They have never been in any office of authority before. Just from uh, school or from where you dump them in the cabinet, and uh, for the first time they will find out they no 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 they are, they are out of uh, place. But I am happy that they are catching very very fast, and I'm pleased that you see. In next time, uh, uh, if I become, uh, uh, if I win elections again in future, I will put more, because I can see that it is just like us when we came from the bush. None of us had run a government before. We just ushered in like that, and uh, uh, we knew about using guns. We didn't know about uh, running a ministry. But when we put there, within six months, we were able to understand and be able to be administrators. So the same for the youth. I am very satisfied now that I think it is good to bring uh, the younger uh, generations into office so that uh, when we leave, we are satisfied that we leave behind us young people who have institutional uh, memory and we have capacity to deliver. Right. Munyarazi uh, Magomeza, per Twitter, Anoti, how will the newly appointed a Zimbabwe board chairman and his board work with the administrator. He says, according to the Reconstruction of State Indebted Insolvent, Insolvent Companies Act, the boards of, of the companies under reconstruction shall be divested of the control and management of the company's affairs. That's not a problem. The board is a board of Air Zimbabwe. The administrator who is doing the reconstruction has a period just been given. I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not uh, ignorant of that. So I know where we are going. The board must be there. 
those who get frightened because we have put people who are going to drive things is their own fault. So there is no conflict at all. The body is, his duty is spelled out. The administrator has his duties or her duties spelled out. Let them do his duty and let the board do their duty. So I think it is a good opportunity for us to remind our listeners uh, that you can send your messages through on 0717 I'll remind you of that number, 0717 Keep your contributions coming through on that uh, platform there, as well as on all of our social media platforms. That's at Capital FM. As a reminder to our listeners, this discussion is live on Capital 100.4 FM here in Harare, but it is also live on Star FM, Nyami Nyami FM, and Diamond FM. It is also being streamed live on Facebook, that's on Zim Papers TV network, as well as uh, at our Facebook page, which is at Capital FM. So keep those uh, contributions coming through. I know there may be a little bit of concern around the fact that we are fast ra running out of time. I'm reliably informed that we will have a few more minutes to continue with uh, the questioning, so you can uh, do send those through uh, on those platforms, as I have said. You're listening to Catching Up with ED here on Capital 100.4 FM. Leading the conversation. You're tuned in to Harare's Talk Companion, Capitalk 100.4 FM. Welcome back to Catching Up with ED. Thank you so much for sending in your contributions on 0717 So as you know, uh, we've decided that we'll take a few more minutes in order to get as many of your contributions that you've been sending in on the different uh, platforms. We'll kick uh, off with some uh, contributions, Nyari. Yeah, we have a wide range of questions coming from our listeners here. Um, what, on WhatsApp, a listener says, are there any mitigation procedures that have been laid out to assist the Registrar General's office to print passports? Yes. We have a company which introduced new <coughs> technology in the production of um, passports. However, I'm informed that uh, this company has decided to <coughs> take the department ransom by demanding certain payments which in the past they would allow and give time 
for the department to pay. As a result of that, some of the consumables got um, expired when they were dealing with the uh, legacy date, something of that sort. And yet there was a um, payment plan which I think was agreed among the department in that particular company. So suddenly they said they would not print uh, any more uh, passports. Then uh, we, I moved in and gave the money to the department so that they could print passports. When the department paid that money, it was then used to pay legacy dates, not uh, consumables for present uh, um, uh, uh, production of passports. That was not fair. However, we discovered that when uh, this new department was created, in the past, the fidelity printers were producing passports. And we have just discovered now that fidelity printers has enough material which may last another four years in printing passports. All what is required is now to do certain, uh, to require, to, to procure certain uh, uh, consumables uh, compatible with the material with uh, uh, fidelity. And in, the, in that process, it was only yesterday when I was informed about that, and I gave authority that those consumables should be procured. So that um, it is unwise in future to depend on one single uh, provider who then has the software alone, that person. You must procure uh, machinery or technology which can be procured elsewhere other than from the same person. Rather than you s procure uh, equipment whose software is only produced by that single person. Because when you quarrel, or when you meet at uh, some place, you call it a girlfriend, then he stops supplying uh, 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 consumables. Yeah, that, is not, that is not proper. So I have said to the departments, let us not put our eggs in one basket. Fortunately, we have these um, fidelity printers, which is all, most of the materials which you want in terms of uh, 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 paper. But however, I have said, I will make sure that I clear the legacy date. Then you can go to the table and discuss how to go forward. Moving on, um, Tafadza Goriat is the Passenger Association of Zimbabwe President. He says, He's what? He's the President of the Passenger Association of Zimbabwe. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm young. Do I think I'm sure? Did you? I'm young. Do I think I'm sure? Uka Terreco, Zinoka, Terracuti, Macure, Mavira, Furai, Mugongo, Camira, say, Mugonga, Camira, say, because Zino is Patever in one and a half years chet. A patchina district Rimuno. Resina equipment no gaziram guag. Quesa question gazigu. Nyari pondio good. I was gazigu was very much at Yossi. In a tender as you gaziru. Tino farra put you hammered zeriz no garacumaru at the one of them go where canaka, chido chedi jocho. Um go no tower and the mumme canamibi as such a one of the kucha shika equipment and the curve as you gaziramiguac. Tai Taisa and Dangar Zedukut Ayo Kumaru Zeva Kanakut Kumarua, Migwagwangai Naki. Chikuru Chate Chifanda Chokuti, a e, councillor, Aripa Ward, na DA, Ga, Muro District Council, Gavas Vimigwagwa, no Fana Kutanga Kugazirwa, Yakanya Kushata. Saka Iwe Mgwagwako Kanya Kushata, Taura Kuro District Council, Ekoku. Kuti aiwa, mbore gira aiwa mburi kuita yako zino. Uwe kuno uyu wakanya ya kushata, uchabo na wachi kubatsila. Mm -hmm. e, Nukuti, iu bane nge baka sao mapayori jiza wako chata ngano, chata ngano uyu. Asipu mkainda wako, sepa nibe wondi. 
muno kwanisa kunzika ne road is council yenyu kuti mugadzire mukokwa iwoyo pakuzotenga ya muchova ah nokuti ino i democracy ka unoita zvaunoda ndiwo wananga wega kuda muchova wale gere wana kuti kamchova akakwipira usati wana mari yakawanda kuti utenge mota iri nani unombofamba vone dzakana kune anditi kuna mabaza ari ndiwo anombofamba naoka kudzamara vane mari iri nani kuti utenge mota iri nani zvino otenga muchova unogwara obva wachema kuti muchova wangu unogwara Reke tende zvemberi vakuru hanzi mvunza wake wekupetsira ndewe kuti zvino zvina kumira zvakanaka muzvipatara and vakawanda vane mari dzavo vari kupura kwa kunze kwenyika ati zve matititi icho icho kwadi Zimbabwe yakambe iri pa mukano kuti vanhu vaite bva kuti dzimunyika vachiuya kuzora munomunyika medu nokuti zvipatara zve zvakanaka zvikuru asine mtoro wakazomboti wira Nenjozi ya kati wira makorea furae. Zipatra zwele zwaka zikira chaizu chaizu kuinda pasi. Iko zino tiriku zama kugazira. Ndika uku nye ulira. Ama yangu. Kuti kuna ma doktor za kawi ya kuzundibona kusteta house. Wakati wande. Wakati zwa tiri kuna nde zuzu nde zuzu nde zuzu waka nyura I think four or five pages. Ye equipment. Ndoku ndipa kutinditake zuni zuzu. Ndapo wazunizo zoezo. E, kwa tae si tenga. Takana tunda zunizo. Wakatipa ena amount. Ndi itahuri. Wakatipa ena amount. Kuti. Mnobana. For example. What it. Zunzo mata ora zoda 20 million. US dollars. Zuzichipa tara chumwechete. Saka ini pandaka. Wanamuka na ukuta ora na vice president of India. Paka mbubu ya kunu. Tota ora chita ora kati aiwa. Kama mtida michini ya mshu patra mbobu ya ekunu. Saka arwende runoru. Nda piwa listi ya ye. Nama na 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 chiremba. Ndoku inda kwa mana sitenga. Ndoku wana kuti. E, Maria yacho. E, toti, toti kana uteni milioni. Ino ngo tengera. Chipatra chimwe. So nrafura ye. Modi. Onde fone la prime minister wa kindia. Ah makani makani tiripo. E, wakani ndo njimu kura kote za kuwina kwa kaita. Ndo patami na mnya ya. Asi ya ano dada skuru. Ah, no zida. No kuti, inda ya itarana churungu. Iyo itarana churungu zicho kwa ke. Poma ano umu ano mturikira kusa kuchurungu. Asi ta kupeza, ta kutara nye ta peza. Aka vaa itarana churungu. Kuna otu mnana zida. Anyway, the ganzo kunya ya. <laughs> Mwede akati, I was. So ano itarana zumzira. Tumamunu wako kuno, tiboni. Ndaka tumamunu. Ikoko. Maria yanga chitenga. Zunu zuzipatra chimwecheti. Ya tenga zunu. Zuzipatra zishanu. Saka ubuone. Kudihiwa sama temba kasunura. Kwa tanga chito makureo saye. Chitenga kuwestuku. Maria yoyo. Yanga chizino tenga zunu. Zuzipatra chimwecheti. Ya tenga zunu. Zuzipatra zishanu. Kwa zoti pa urongo. Okuronga kutituwane. Eka gupleni nukutakura zunzuwe. Saka tukuta sita kutuzuzuwe. Tukunaka. Kwa nguwa mfupi pupi kutewe. Pa, eh, eh. Tuzo zuwe nyaya mshonga ya taugwa. Mm. Jidofu kwa chana mba chidini. Ichi, ichi tarinani. Ichi tarinani. Nukuti pa mwezi. Ne pa mwezi. Tu mega shua kuti reserve bengesa mari. Right. Pena anu mwe mbunzo. We'll continue there. Ichi kunguru uh, says, does the government have any plans to assist people with disabilities in the areas of employment? jobs and loans as well as transport. Um, uh, each Kunguri is suggesting kuti tadi watanzi tibadere, tisabadara mumabazi ema zupko. Pano zoya, Lawrence Moyo nanyasha utete, iwa vanoti what plans do you have to support the youths, especially around job creation? Panyaye vamwevedu, eh, ma disabled vamwevedu ndine nda creator office ya D director for disability is a president where <coughs> um, Malinga, Dr. Malinga is in my office. They are not the advisor, man needs a disabled community. Zumetu Gona, Zumezwana Kubila Sata Zugona, Zumezwana Kuchinjam Temu, 
e, sokuti vano kumbira kuti tinoda mparamit namba ya kati. Saka sote na uti tichinje konstitution yedu kuti tise namba ya tiwe zile wano mparamit. Asi kuzuno tienge chikuwa nsa kuisa wano rotu. Asi wano tiwa showman wano kutu watu siwe. Wotaka sokuti mkabineti tuoda namba ya kati ya wano disabled. Zose zo 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 wana sungiri wakuwa banga wa mparamendi fesi kutuwa gusipi ndapaya mkabineti. Wakoti waka isa mtema yokuti kamba ni mwene imwe ka ino employ ya wano from 100 and above ngaewe at least two disabled persons. Again, tuofu na kuti siwone kuti zudo kwa nisika ere na kuti muna hafuma kamba ni yaki tuosa mtema yokuti itaizwe. Inindi nofunga kuti chini chofu na kuhilano wa mparamendi kutuwa taizozo nukuti tikango regera uh, bakuwa nisi kubasirika zoda kuti isu tipe mtemu woku manekiza makampani kana manisiu senze urumendi kuti panabani bakati ngapa wane disabled at least number ya kati zunu zwa toko wansa kutiti as I say I am a listening president and my administration should also be a listening administration makomplensa akadai anofana kuti tiwane nzira zukuti ni tabasira kana tawato ta, 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 take on board my issues abo but most importantly, ndina comrade Malinga, arimu office mango. Tino garajita msanga na yeyo, achindi pa ma, ma views and vakuma associations avu. Pa ninyaya yewe chidiki vati, wano da kubatsiru wa ninyaya yema basa? E, we chidiki vane ma idea saka wanda. Wani wano zizivakuti ma basa majinji, angu kwa nisungu wanika. Wani disaya mtemu, Muti kana kune kuchipua minda 10. 20% kana 10% ngaipo kumu youth. Kana kuchipua kune eh, any training inenge ishitika. Such percentage ngaende kui, kui youth. Eh, kana kupara mendi percentage ngaende kui youth. Ndozo wane nga wachita. Asi chiripo ndo chokuti ekonomi yedu ngai muke. Kana ekonomi ya muka jobs who come in. FDI, foreign direct investment, ya tiri kuita through engagement and re-engagement, ngai uye, ino kreta ma jobs. Also, but, wechi di kibedu, tinoda kuti, wabe ni ma skills. Usa angoto wapedza, form 4 ya wakana form 6, oti nda hakuda basa, wauna skill ya wana yu, techi subida kuti, ngaba ende kuma tertiary institutions edu, wate geni ma skills. Kana kuti isuse urumende, titaure ne ma high institutions of learning. Kuti ma products ema institutions edu, ma universities and colleges should produce ma products who relate to our industry, to the, to the level of development of our industry and our commerce. So that uchibuda mu uh, institutions of higher learning, uno kwanisa kuno pinda basa, zwaka kwana, nukuti uri trendi. Either you are a mechanic, you, you, are, you are a doctor, you are what, but you are fully trained to fit in the current environment of our economy. That is necessary. Not in the past where the teaching at university has no relationship with the level of development in the country. These must come together. We must, fortunately, uh, when I had a discussion, my, 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 my principals, my, my vice chancellors, try to agree, my capitals of industry, try to agree. Yo ma captains of industry, tukuti yo each big company ngaiwe ne program of training ino nzichu uri pa sota pa digiri yako unombo yi suwa attachment attachment yi ndiyo yi churungu unombo yi ndiyo yi attachment so that you have also the practical side of uh, your training on that note we'll take a, a quick break remember to keep sending your contributions on 0717 triple seven triple seven as well as on our social media platforms keep them coming this is catching up with ed here on capital 100.4 fm leading the conversation
Welcome back. This is the final segment of Catching Up with ED, the inaugural um, conversation with the president here on Capital 100.4 FM. So in this uh, last uh, segment, Mr. President, we'd like to give you an opportunity to give us your closing remarks. Thank you very much. My last, uh, my remarks in concluding this discussion to the nation, for too long, our country has been held back by the old way of doing things in our society, our politics, our economy and our culture. Everything was old. New ideas have been resisted. New developments rejected. The results of this are the economic challenges we see and experience today. Recently, I was asked what I see as my main mission as your president. What I want my legacy to be, my answer was simple. Reform the economy. Reform the way we do things. Reform our institutions. Reform our legislation. Reform our mindset as a people. We must turn our back on the old way of doing things. We must embrace new methods of doing things. The new Zimbabwe we we succeed for new Zimbabwe to succeed we must embrace reform in everything that we do and that is exactly what we are attempting to do my minister of finance has gone about reforming the very basis of our economy returning us to a budget surplus and delaying the foundations for long term growth and prosperity Yes, today is tough, but tomorrow is looking bright and brighter. We are opening Zimbabwe up to investment, building a new and a mutually beneficial relationship with the nations and the businesses of the world. We cannot be left behind. And we are repealing POSA and IPA, two pieces of legislation that have been heavily criticized, symbols of the old Zimbabwe. The process of reform is not an easy one. It involves sacrifices from all of us, brings about short-term upheaval that causes pain and suffering. Government must create safe nets to deal with that situation. There will also always be those who are wedded to the old ways and who don't want to see change. Those who are threatened by new ideas Open Zimbabwe, we are building. There are people among us who bury their heads in sand and they cannot move with others. There is only one path, reform and the reform. This is the way to go. In my youth as a soldier, I had a clear mission to establish an independent Zimbabwe. I fought for this mission with all my heart whatever the consequences were, consequences were. Now, as your president, I have a new mission, no less important, to reform Zimbabwe so that we build a country in which all have the opportunity to prosper on basis of talent, not corruption. I will fight for the goal with all my heart and all my soul, whatever it takes. The process is tough, but I promise you it is worth it. We will reform Zimbabwe together. We will leave nobody behind. We will fulfill our potential. We will build our new Zimbabwe for all. Good night, Zimbabwe. And on that note, we end the first in a series of Catching Up with ED here at Capital 100.4 FM. Join us again same time next Friday, the 21st of June, 2019. So keep your contributions and your questions coming on our platforms. Thank you, Mr. President, for taking time to join us this evening. And thank you to our audiences and contributors on different platforms here in Zimbabwe and all over the world. We thank our producers, the technical team, as well as our partners for making this event possible. 
from myself, Penny Pangeti, from Nyara Zomakombe, and Kudzanai Sharara, as well as executive producer Conrad Manawashe and Tobias Mudzingwa, and of course, His Excellency Edim Nangagwa. Have a wonderful evening and keep listening to the voice of Harare Capital 100.4 FM, leading the, the conversation. conversation. Thank you. To Capital 100.4 FM, leading the conversation. Kuwa gari wesewe muarare, chenje rai matsozi ariku famba ni mota zisina ma number plates. Varuku bazinu shakaita semafoni, ma laptop, nezimwe shakakosha. 